So we're on Rake, uh, Lake Lane Rec Room, and I realize I'm at that age where I'm pretty sure I'm the oldest guy in this room. Go, Justin, go, Justin, go! Go, Justin, go, Justin, go! I've never seen bubble hockey with a screen before. No, that's fine. All right. Oh, it's, see, it's, it's a, the Kraken versus uh, the Lightning. Uh-oh, watch out now. Yeah, it literally is the Kraken. That's, that's amazing. Quite literally the Kraken. It's quite literally the Kraken. Hey, what are you doing spinning around there, buddy? So we're doing Street Fighter 6 over there. We got Mario Kart right here. A decent place called Rec Room. Of course, I uh, gotta show some love to my favorite Magic Sword, one of my favorite arcade games of all time. Oh my goodness. I love seeing Magic Sword here in the arcade. Darts? Sure. Oh, so close. So close. Ah! One of the fun things about this one is it literally has an ashtray. There's a metallic ashtray still attached to this. Back when smoking was uh, socially acceptable, you wouldn't want to just leave it on the machine. You just kind of, you know, leave it, leave it there while you're, you know, twin sticking uh, Robotron here. I'm just surprised how there's like video games everywhere. There's arcade machines everywhere. They kind of have them spread out a little bit, which I thought was a unique idea where they would have like some games and then some vendors and then some games and then some vendors. And we're good. We're still setting up here. We're opening uh, tonight, but I just set up my table. Got Tapper, looking forward to playing it. Then you also see things like Star Castle, which actually literally has an overlay that gives you the color you need. So when you're playing the game, you know, yeah, it's all vector shit. Oh man, that super nostalgic memories playing Wizard of War downstairs at our Yakima Mall at Videotron. Was that the name of the arcade? This, this takes me all the way back. I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> and again, this came out during a time when there wasn't anything standard yet, so player one is on this side, player two is on this side, and then you aim with this and then fire with this, so it's like everything's reversed by today's standards. Did you know Spy Hunter was also a pinball machine back in the day? And it's interesting because it's on the side, it's like not quite in the middle. The flippers are on the side, and there's other stuff going on over here too, so that's just pretty interesting here. Oh, one of my absolute favorites right here in uh, World Cup. World Cup, I love World Cup. It's one of my one of my favorite favorites. I'm looking forward to playing this again. And this was like oh, from a distance, like oh that's cool, but I thought it was something else. No, it's video pinball. You can uh, change the games here. See, what do you want to play? That one? Maybe that one? How about Family Guy? How about F1 Tomcat? How about Elvis? And it changes those up there too every time you uh, flip, rotate it. Oh, there's Eight Ball Deluxe. I was just talking about that the other day. Really looking forward to playing some of this. Congo Bongo, one of my favorite arcade games ever. Man, that looks great. I love it. I love it. I love it. Can't wait. Mixins have Space Harrier and Afterburner right next to each other. This is like old school Space Harrier where you can like use the trigger, you can use the button on top, or even just use the button on the side too. That's neat. This is the cutest Neo Geo machine I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen one of these before. It's like a little individual one player dupe compared to the Candy Cab. That's uh, how big it is. <laughs> and with the mold matics kind of presses here and creates a thing. This one creates that with the mold matic And here are a bunch of ones from yesteryear that they've done for other things in the past too, which is so cool. A little history behind it. And then you also have the computer kind of free play set up over here and more consoles on the other side. With a big old banner like that, how could you decline walking inside? You see the toys and the games. I like it when they do these kind of cage things where you can just like walk inside and Kind of look around a little bit here. Find something cool anyway on the inside. Oh, there's some games, let's check them out. Hey, they got Super Bonk. I'll right, take it. So far, so cool. Uh, the convention will be starting here at uh, four o'clock today. This is Friday now. And we'll see what we can find while we're here. And just the interesting layout, I can't get over it. I kind of like it though. Where it's like these, like a few pinball machines and then a few uh, vendors and a few more like pinballs and arcades and a few more vendors and then more pinballs and more vendors. It's just very neat to see where it's all around. You know, with like the arcade area, and then, then there's some vendors, and then there's like some pinball, and then there's more vendors, and I kind of like it. It's unique to say the least. I kind of dig it. Old school arcade game called Sniper. I'm gonna hit the power button on. Let's see if we can actually target anyone with this thing here. There we go. We got one. <laughs> one. One so far of many, hopefully. So we got these from this guy, and there's something on the other side, huh? All right. He said. He said, "Don't." He's specifically said, "Don't get angry." Sense of humor. I got a great sense of humor. <laughs> I love it. No, I'm. I'm down. This game's called Block a Shot. Block a Shot, and you have these little things underneath that you can just kind of hit up, like that. 
So you have to like, let's get that guy in the way, right? It's hard to do it once, well, oh, so here we go. All right, so, you're trying to, yeah. Even have the uh, four player warlords, got a couple of red tints over here. You got some more warlords there. Always love to see people enjoying the Toxic Crusaders coming soon. I'm personally looking forward to this. And of course, he's let me do a video on that. Oh, I just went away, there it is. Okay, that's out right now, Prison City. Some of these mini figures here, including, uh, what's, is this from Mask? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jason Voorhees is his mask. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, we know that We know that one there. This is the weirdest Pokemon I ever saw. No, it's, not, it's not Pokemon, is it? It's interesting, uh, this old school pinball, though. You know, one of the things I like about going to these uh, arcade expos is Hopping Mappy. A game I've literally never heard of until just right now. I love Mappy. Love Mappy Land on the NES. Love Mappy in the arcade. You know, the classic. And then I see this game. And I'm like, what the dude? I've never even heard of this game. So, even I'm discovering new stuff all the time, you know? This is a little mini cabinet that happens to have Zookeeper, Jungle Hunt, Rastin, and so much more, too. So, it was, it was playing Zookeeper a little bit ago, but that's awesome. We got some of these old school pins, too. Look at these. Here's the Shamrock. It's like old school style. That's so cool. So this was called uh, Dropkick from 1934. Almost 100 years old. And it's a flipperless machine, it's like pinball, but there's no uh, flippers. So it really is a game of, you know, chance and skill. 400, there we go. Let me hit the button again. Let's do another one here. What do we got, what do we got, where are we going, where are we going? And away we go, another 400, okay. This bit of history here, the 1931 Bafferball, Gottlieb's first pinball machine. It is a flipperless pinball machine. When you uh, insert coins, it'll drop them all down. And then you can just kind of like, you pull it back, the ball gets loaded. You can just do them all at once if you want. Hey, I got the baffle point. And then the other ones are gonna fall wherever they fall into, uh, I'll fall into play there. How oh, cool. And this is the uh, candy cab section here. We got some candies over here. We saw a little bit of that earlier. And then uh, also got the irritating maze, got the long screen Darius. Irritating maze, irritating maze. How irritating is it gonna be when they touch the walls? It's coming soon, around the corner. Nice and easy, nice and light, all the way up. Let's go, let's go. You're gonna find your way right in there. Oh, oh man. I'll do my best. Around the corner. Ah! It literally like. Ah! It like busts. It busts smoke out of this. Oh, not smoke, but like wind out of this thing. This is the one to get. Token Taverns. It covers uh, arcade bars. I recognize many of those people there too. And they have it, I mean, it's, it's available on Tubi for free. You can rent it on Amazon. They have the Blu-rays, but for the same price as the Blu-ray, they have the VHS. I bought the VHS, man. I'm not gonna decline that. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. Again, it's on Tubi for free with ads, um, but VHS, man. Throwback, the Highlight Heroes. Boof. Can I challenge you? I'll try it. I lost. Seven to four. I was, I was the four. But fun game. These are especially cool to see. Looks like TurboGrafx-16 to me. What is this here? Look at this, the Fujitsu. Is that what this is? My goodness. All right, and I'm an idiot. That's what it actually is, but if you commented before you saw this, thank you for uh, keeping me in my place. Makes the most sense in the world. I don't know why I didn't see that in the first place, but you know, I just haven't really seen one anymore, or ever, or something. I don't know, whatever. Shut up, leave me alone. Have you noticed that you match more with the pinballs on free play? Tell me that's not the Fonz without telling me that's not the Fonz. What? Good morning, sunshine. It's day two now of free play, Florida. This is the, did I say Florida correctly? I don't think I did. Too early for that. <laughs> God, John Riggs here. You already know who I am. Why am I saying my own name? 
We have, uh, that's the hotel I'm staying at, the Spring Hill Suites right over here. We have the Hyatt, and just right here is the RP Funding Center, and that's where the convention is uh, this weekend. So, nice and convenient. I like it when the hotel is like right next to it, you can walk to it, or, you know, it's sometimes it's even attached to the convention. That's even better. But let's see what Saturday holds for us today. One of the cool things about Free Play Florida is with most of the machines, I'd say a lot of the machines, I don't know if it's most or not, maybe like half, I don't know. Um, if you haven't noticed yet, some of the, uh, you can see the kind of in the peripheral of the videos, is they're almost all like for sale. So if you really like one, you can actually take it home. I mean, some are like, you know, they're like total annihilation. If you want to pay $7,000 or best offer, you know, you can actually take this home this weekend. Almost, uh, almost 10 grand for uh, Star Trek here. One of my top three favorite pinball machines of all time, World Cup Soccer, only $69.99. But then other ones like, you know, Green Beret, Russian Attack or something like that, only uh, 480 bucks, $480. I would be very tempted to buy this just because I don't have a proper arcade machine at home. And that's, that's a totally decent game. Of course, with some of the other ones like Tutankhamen or Congo Bongo, I would love to have those. But again, just, I don't have the room for them anyway. Bubbles, fun game, fun arcade game from uh, that. But that is uh, a little creepy, you know. I've never seen this. Is so you made this? Yeah, I have. That's awesome. Do you have like an Etsy shop or anything, or yeah, an Etsy shop. you just do it? You just do. Oh, you do dude, stuff. you should you should totally have this on the shop. Something. <laughs> That's such a good idea. Everybody says that. Go, goes well with this one. So. Oh, I can I can hide my alcohol in that one. Nice. Oh, what a fun idea! And this is good for any convention. If you have like a main screen and there's like nothing really going on, just start doing like the Jackbox games, and anybody can play if they have a phone. So all these people are just sitting around, either watching or playing Jackbox, or they're in the, the uh, you know they're in the uh, audience. You can you can do you can be an audience member in these uh, Jackbox games. So yeah, what a fun 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 idea! This is awesome. Let's see it. What do you got? What do you got? Are you filming me? I am now. <laughs> I got some Amiga CD32. Oh my goodness! Okay. I don't have an Amiga, but I'd love to see it. I'm always down for. I got Missile Ninja on the Game Boy. Oh, how fun. Okay, yep, yep, yep. That's a good one. Uh, Dragon Ball Z. That's uh, oh. that, that is playable. Fancy. Another Missile Ninja game. Okay. <laughs> oh, there. Yeah, I remember that one. Racing on the Jaguar. That is an official reprint from Songbird. Oh, interesting. This is just the box, but it's very hard to find. Oh, okay. Bomberman. Uh, Jeez, yeah, look at your whole collection in your bag. It's like Mary Poppins a uh, bag of tricks Box here. Only. I bought it twice, I didn't realize it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there's the air zone. Oh jeez. Oh my goodness. I don't know what would be Wow. Oh, that's awesome. So we made a trade for Arizona and then a couple of Goldmon games. But I'm always down for trades. I never know what I'm looking for, but always happy to hear people out. I thought I was looking pretty good. Until Bowser shows up. Come on now. Isn't that the best thing ever? <laughs> We got, the, we got all the villains here. We got we got to get like Balmavici and everyone else and Mario and get them Mario. all. Him Bison, I guess. You can throw him in there too. He's bad guy, but this one's bad guy. Exactly. Let's see what the heck that they sent us here. And this is a magic towel. <laughs> a magic towel servant. Can I open this? Uh, I wonder if I can open this thing here. If you can. If I can open it here on screen. My heart always skips a beat when I see the Flintstones. It's not the Flintstones I'm looking for. But it's still a fun game all the same. Oh, well, I was just thinking about this game the other day. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I sort of wouldn't mind finding again just to have. I love that guy. Love the brand. Gyromite. Is it? It is not. The idea is if the um, where you see the pins, there's like a little metal thing right in the middle, and if it's like sticking up in the middle, then it does not have a converter. However, if the pins are, I'm trying to show my fingers. <laughs> there's like, it, it, if it's right in the middle, there's not a converter. If it's on the side, then there is a converter in there, and it just feels heavier too. What a great idea for nostalgia to have. You see that? Happy Meal boxes folded, framed. I mean, you know, I collect cereal boxes. I bet there are people who collect the, uh, you know, the, these things. Oh, these Pirates of the Caribbean ones. The Sonic one. Got Bobby's World. Got some Charlie Brown themed Inspire ones here. That's cool. This is the Magical Chalice. Anything you put in here instantly rules. Come on. How funny. I love that too. Back when there's three of them. Go along with that, you got that guy too. Kind sir, what is the weirdest, coolest thing you have at your booth? 
the thing that's like you won't believe because there's there's some amazing thing. I mean, like the Happy Meal stuff is amazing. The games you have, great prices. The the couch potato, you know, that is pretty creepy. I remember that being a thing. I, I, I feel this way sometimes. A Thundercats eraser. All right. Fresh from the dollar store. That's perfect. <laughs> what happened to Chewbacca? Dude, oh, he's seen a lot of stuff. He's seen, he's seen some stuff. Oh, poor Chewie. Quick trade. It worked out a trade for uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle and Nick Kids. Why not? Oh man, I thought those. I thought those were cereal boxes for a second. <laughs> but this is cool. I just like how they have. I like it when they do these little things. So you like look in the corners and find a box of cereal still sealed with the, uh, the cassette holder right there. Very neat. I already have one. A big thanks to Retro Wolf. I already have one of these, by the way. I didn't forget. Now, these, these long boxes uh, sure take me back. Look at the Zero Divide. Look at the Zero Divide box art. That's basically like the Nintendo black box game. So it's like, hey, this is kind of what the game actually looks like when you're playing it. We got some really good stuff in here. I just love the box on this one. The Atari flashback. <laughs> That's so cool. Hey, finally. I thought you were military or something. What are you doing? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, now that, now that you know how you're doing it. I know, I just love these old games though. Old school. Ten cents or three games for uh, for a quarter. And you're the, you're the you're the real robot, Nick. You're gonna you're gonna take my job. Perfect. Where's your hands? <laughs> what do you want to say? Uh oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's up two games to zero. One game away from. All right, you got this. All right, let's get the contact. When you get the contact, it makes a sound. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Almost, almost. Hey! You got it! Woohoo! <laughs> wow, look at you. Yeah, good luck with this. I mean, yeah, but do you have one of these? Good Lord. The first commercially successful portable computer from 1981 is this guy right here. 24.5 pounds, costed uh, $1,795, and those be the stats on this bad boy. Yeah, look at this bad boy here, the Commodore SX-64, also known as the Executive 64 or VIP 64 in Europe. This one happens to be playing, um, I just saw Blueprint a second ago. Oh man, this is making me miss the UK. The Amiga CD32 and Super Methane Brothers? <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, they got the, got the Palladia set up. There's the Palladia that George was talking about. Kind of a cool little piece of art too, just like the video game cartridge through the years. There you go. <laughs> Very competitive. You got Mario on this side and then Luigi's on the other side. It's not Spike. And uh, you can open up the doors to send the other enemies their way, which is kind of fun. There we go. Yeah, versus Wrecking Crew. A little bit different from the NES one, but I love it. You know, it's coming back to say goodbye to John Riggs, but uh, unfortunately, hey, there he is. This dog is John Riggs. Very cool. Well, thank you for a wonderful weekend at Free Play Florida. If you missed out on anything you saw on the table, like my arcade-scented air fresheners, my cereal book, Shopify link in the description below.